gear seekers, I'm Nick. You might remember this PC over here. This is my Threadripper Pro editing PC. We did a series comparing the then 12th gen to see what was the best for video editing and content creation. Since that video and that series, I've had a couple things happen with this machine. I had 256 gigs of registered ECC memory and some of the modules died. And as I mentioned in that video, that memory was a data center pool. The fact that it eventually died and became really unstable did not surprise me, which then led me into changing in a quad channel DDR4 kit with 128 gigs of RAM. One of the things I noticed with doing this was the computer just didn't feel as snappy. Timeline and editing performance just hasn't been as good since I did that. Now there's probably a few factors that play into this. The first one being that this is Threadripper Pro and these are eight channel memory CPUs and that's basically what this configuration is designed to do. So running it in quad channel can and probably will degrade the performance. And that my friends, is where G-Skill comes in. I reached out to them and I was like, hey guys, do you reckon you could send us a 256 gig kit of some of your Triton Z Neo? And they were like, of course, dude, we got you. So first thing is, I'm gonna upgrade the RAM in this back to 256 gigs with this completely ridiculous kit from G-Skill. Shout out to them again. One other thing that I've been curious about since Intel Arc dropped is will I be able to increase my timeline performance by adding Intel Arc and getting Quick Sync enabled in Premiere as well as being able to render out using NVENC on my 3090. Before we go on, there's a couple of things I need to unpack with our previous Puget Bench results and some things that may or may not make sense to you. So when we did the initial build, when we did the series testing, we used a 3090 Ti. We also used an older version of Premiere because this was nine months ago. As well as that, we only used 64 gigs of RAM. It was running in eight channel mode. And what I realized is I didn't actually benchmark this system when it was running the registered ECC modules. I thought I'd done that, but I went back and checked all of our testing results and everything, and I just don't have it. Take these results with a grain of salt. Again, different GPU was used between the two tests, different version of Premiere, different RAM configuration, same motherboard, same CPU, but Mainly you can get an idea of what we've lost out in performance as well. So all of that aside, the overall scores are wildly different. And the overall score here is closer to what I saw with an i5 system that I built. To me, it's telling me that a couple of weird things are going on and I'm gonna guess it's something to do with the memory. Let's change the RAM out first and rerun Puget Bench to see if we get a different score. As mentioned, this is a 128 gig kit of some Thermaltake Tough RAM. This RAM's not too bad. I just feel like we need to be running in eight channel mode. Okay, all the memory has been detected, which is a really good sign. So let's just apply the RAM overclock because this is 3200 mega transfer memory. This is actually designed to be an eight channel kit. It's not like a bunch of four channel kits. I think this kit's been validated by G-Skill as well. Everything seems to be working just fine. The memory is detected. All of the modules are detected. We've got 256 gigs of RAM detected. We're also running at 3200 mega transfers. So, I mean, I guess let's run Puget Bench again. At first, when I swapped out that dead 256 gig registered ECC kit, I thought it might have been a little bit of a placebo with the performance difference between having all the RAM modules populated and only four, but the results here speak for themselves with this new RAM kit running at 3200 mega transfers. The on paper score here with this real world benchmark from Puget Bench is wildly different. Look at the difference in score. Like let's just say the overall score, right? 
it's 400 points higher with the new memory. The export score is way higher. The playback score is closer to that target of 200. The effect score is much higher and the GPU score is much, much higher. So me feeling like it was running slower, this whole time I was right. But can we make it go a little bit faster with the A770, given that this technically supports QuickSync and nothing else in this system does. <laughs> Let's add a GPU and see what the story is. Now, I'm not gonna actually be plugging any display into this. This is purely going to be for added performance. Let's see if we can just use it as an accelerator. All right, I need to add some additional PCIe power cables to make this work. Actually, one of the reasons why I really like this case is I can add stuff to it without having to pull out the power supply, just flap the door open. In goes the Intel Arc A770. People who are not used to seeing lots of expansion cards in systems will be like, oh, that's uh, very close and probably not good for airflow. Maybe. That's what these motherboards are designed for. I ended up running a whole bunch more tests than I thought it would run just to do a bit of validation with all of the different hardware combinations to see what the actual story was, to see whether or not Arc was going to help accelerate this particular workflow. I don't use Resolve, so I didn't run the Resolve benchmarks and I don't wanna have Resolve installed on my main editing PC because with Resolve installed, it can do some really funny things to other things that I've got set up, so I just left it be. So the story goes that if you have the Intel Arc GPU installed alongside an NVIDIA GPU, it doesn't do anything in Premiere. Legitimately, it does nothing, zero. In fact, it made the performance a little bit worse. Now, I also thought I would try switching the Puget Bench project settings over to OpenCL because you can do that and then rendering it out again. And the score was lower than with the NVIDIA GPU by about 200 odd points. Then I decided that I wanted to pull the 3090 out completely and then run it all just on OpenCL on the Arc GPU. And the score was about what we scored before doing the memory upgrade. All of those tests tell us that the Intel Arc GPU doesn't do anything to accelerate any workflows in Premiere Pro right now. If you're thinking of adding an Arc GPU for QuickSync, like I've been theorizing about all of this time, there's no real point unless you're rendering directly out to AV1, if that is part of your workflow. Otherwise, I would say just stick with either an NVIDIA GPU or an AMD GPU if you really want use the Arc GPU on its own, but running two GPUs together in Premiere Pro, although they do actually work together, they don't work as well as you think they would work. And that's, the, that's just what the benchmarks have told us. I did some other tests as well, rendering some of my own projects and setting them up in a custom way to use hardware acceleration for rendering as well. And just using the 3090 was also faster. I've seen a bunch of content over the last little while with people talking about using it for accelerating the AV1 workflows. I don't have that particular use case right now. So Intel Arc is a bust, but at the end of the day, I'm actually pretty happy that I upgraded the memory because with the Arc GPU out and just how it was before, with the memory set to its overclocking profile, this system is running a lot faster for editing than it has ever run. I would say if you're using a Threadripper Pro system and for some reason you're only using four RAM modules, see if you can get yourself another four modules. And that's just about gonna do it for this video. Thanks for joining on this little, let's call it a exploratory campaign that I've been working on for the last little while. I mean, since last year. And now was the right time for me to actually figure out if this was going to be for you and actually for me too. So now I know. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below. I also put all of the Puget Bench results, all the links to all of the benchmarks down below. So you can take a look at that as well to see if you can use that information so you can come to your own type of conclusion as well. But I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak.
Well, you see, you can, I guess I better go and edit this video on this machine right now. Thanks for watching.